years ago, people will know that we did uh, a presentation on a few of the characters that were leading the uh, 2020 nonsense. And uh, I thought I'd revisit some of the work that I'd done and uh, do, present it tonight. I didn't, we did, did a little bit before Christmas at a live uh, show that we did. And I've been putting a book together and this is part of part of it. So the first chapter is going to be about the biggest chapter in the book it will or chapters part will be about Boris Johnson because that was the biggest uh, research we did during 2020 2021 um there's a lot to unpack though isn't there with there's a lot to unpack and as i've been going through it you, you find you find even more so chris has drawn some new <laughs> pictures of these uh, reprobates um i mean you, Who you that can do top a shot left that's uh nobed ferguson the the modeling oh. man that um oh the computer guy chris uh, yeah chris ferguson yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, neil ferguson neil, mb neil, yeah uh, <clears throat> that was him who told everybody they can't go out of the house and then went to see his bird oh right yes i remember now yeah as um, a member of the babylonian empire is he mb that's correct yes okay. he was in charge of the foot and mouth and the bse and all this other stuff he were mod did all the modeling for that as well the test runs yeah, all the test runs. And obviously that uh, lizard that Chris drew there is Susan Mickey, which we've got a video about her. We'll play that in a bit. Next is Jonathan T Van Tampon with that drool coming down his mouth. <laughs> um, if you if you notice, all Chris's eyes are all strange. Some of them are a little scared. That's probably a piss take of me, that of my lazy left eye. Uh, subconsciously. What, into <laughs> Van Tampon? <laughs> yeah, Van Tampon, yeah. Uh, uh, so, yeah, I mean, I mean, we covered Rishi Sunak in his own show, didn't we? We did that. Yeah, yeah, two years, over own, two years ago now. Special, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. You got to do yeah, the show. Slum, on Slumdog millionaire. Slumdog millionaire. Yeah. So, yeah, we uh, we've done, covered all these. And we've got Tony B. Liar, sausage fingers, um, moron in the middle there. Uh, Piers moron. Piers <laughs> moron. <laughs> yeah, and Wankok. No, Rock absolute rich. quality. Rock right then. Um, but, Lance, uh, you did you did coin the phrase sausage fingers, didn't you? You guys did. I, I, listen, as as I, as far as I remember, it I was early it 2020, and yeah. we were talking about the um, something to do with the Great Reset and how Sausage Fingers was involved, and I and I had a picture of his fingers, and I was like, boys, look at this, <laughs> fucking Sausage Fingers, and I think we just said, it's like, would you trust the guy? Would you take advice from a guy with yeah. fingers like this? So you look at this, and then Sausage Fingers happened, but I'd never heard of it before, <laughs> and I'd never noticed it before that. So yeah, I'm it was happy just to that, take um, for that. Well, I, I the first think, person I, I heard it, say it were you, Lance, anyway. So. And it was funny because I was listening to a podcast the other day. It was a guy in Australia and he, and he said King Charles, as I like to call him, Sausage Fingers. So it's just, They love it over there. Down under, over they love there, using yeah. the phrase King Sausage Fingers. Yeah, Mark <laughs> Devlin told us that as well. He yeah. said he went on his Australian tour and people were using your slang too. They were, <laughs> or, or they understood Three Dark Finish anyway. Like they, People yeah. cracked up when he said Three Dark Finish. Um, they understood Britney Spears' concert. And Sausage mm. Fingers was like, yeah, just... Well, they do grow a life of their own. Because I, I remember saying Britney Spears on the first show we did, then you guys took it to an, a whole new Rise Above level. Uh, <laughs> I think Britney Spears more, concert. Oh, oh, you uh, blame the memesters for that, mate. Yeah. <laughs> it, it just <laughs> took it, it, it... just put it... Injected steroids into it and it went uh, somewhere else. And in and, and the uh, bottom of that picture of King Charles, I actually put Sausage Fingers on him as well. But you can't see it there. Yeah, you can't really see yeah. No, he's he's a bit rude to draw his likeness without including yeah. the, the fucking the whole yeah. chip along. And, and Wankox, yeah. Wankox actually a cockroach because he, he, he yeah. drew he's, that when he was in. Uh, you can see his wings there. Yeah. Where is it? Where is it? I'm the jungle. Yeah. Get me out of here. Whatever it is. Yeah. Hancock's one of the greasiest out there. Yeah. Uh, we, we, I mean, these characters here. How many is the nine of them? I mean, you could pick another thirty on more. there, couldn't I've you? Got more. Yeah. You, the, that's just in Britain as well. Um, mm. Yeah. I mean, Van Tampon, there's a video of Van Tampon saying that he would inject his two children. Uh, this was when they were rolling it out to children. Um, he would give his two children the uh, gift from the gods. Yeah, they loved I that. bet he they fucking did it, did he? Mm, probably not. Probably not, Andy. Probably not. But none of these, well, Tony B. Liar, they were a big thing when he got elected, weren't they, about his kid having the uh, m and yeah, they wouldn't yeah. say. He got asked on camera, um, and he wouldn't. He he wouldn't say. He would, obviously, you know, Tony B. Lyon never answers a, a question straightly anyway. No. But um, it was very obvious he couldn't say. Uh, and then I think the 
holistic practitioner or the doctor who had been consulting <laughs> their family basically spilled the beans, didn't he? Yeah, he did, yeah. 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 A bit like good old Miranda spilled the beans in that toilet in London somewhere. <laughs> what? What's that? Yeah. Well, apparently he got col- Tony B. Lai got caught in a toilet, didn't he, when he was younger? Ah, yes. Uh, George Matthews. Gave yeah. his name as Charles Linton. That's right, Charles Linton. Yeah. And got caught cottaging, didn't he? Yeah, apparently. Might have been on a George Michael video. <laughs> oh dear. So yeah, right. We'll come to uh, our friend here. You like putting drool on the face, don't you, Chris? Yeah, it just it makes him look horrible. And, and really, all all I want to do here is have a chinwag around these people because I mean, we all know the story. I just think sometimes it's good to have a talk about what we thought of it because I mean, I, I we did a lot of obviously podcasts on all this stuff, but I mean, Johnson epitomizes all the things you'd want from a lifetime actor right bloodlines eugenicist father he's got eugenicist traits as well uh evidence of possible trauma-based mind control uh financial control corruption um compromised psychologically financially leg up for all his career right everything he did in his career right the early well when he left school he was writing for the times and he was done for plagiarism and sacked and then given another job at The Guardian. Yeah, it's almost like he had some sort of cheat code yeah. to, con- to constantly be keeping in, in, operating in the right circles mm. at the wrong time. He, he was one of my favourite characters in Clown World. I thought, I thought he's a great character, to yeah. be honest. I always remember um, seeing him in Parliament and, you know, when he's always got his stuck up hair because he's playing, that, he's playing the buffoon. I actually saw him rubbing his hair to make it stand up before he stood up. Yeah. You know, so it was clearly well, does, a part anyone, he was playing. Does anyone, I mean, everyone, in the, even in the mainstream, drew the comparisons between Trump and Boris. They, in some yeah. ways, they were two very different characters, but they, in some ways, they were very the same. They were both the buffoon. Yeah, they were yeah, both yeah. the buffoon. With, in their own unique way. It, you know, he was, the, he was the overly eloquent, overly articulate buffoon. But I'll tell you what, I've got to hand it to old, um, what did we call him, Chancellor Potato Head or something? I've got <laughs> to hand it to him. Yeah, he... He's actually some of his speeches I listened to, especially one where he was going on about um, transhumanism. He, he did this epic speech, I think, back in 2018 or 2019, when he was saying about you know nanobots. You know, it was like it was written by Charles Dickens yeah. or, or um, one of these 19th century authors or poet laureates. He's he's a very uber articulate guy. Well, well fully, to- fully enough, he's into Greek mythology. Yeah, um, you it's can one of the things he did. He did uh, study. Uh, we did a bit, a bit of a uh, thing about it on one of the podcasts and on one of the presentations. Chris, mm. the he, he was he unveiled the what was it, Chris? The Gates of Baal, was it? Yeah, was that, was the, that it? So they did, they did a tour of the. You know, they the, the bombed it in uh, the said Iraq. ISIS bombed it, didn't they? Not Iraq. Iraq. It was uh, it? in Syria. Syria, yeah. Was it? Yeah, they bombed it in Syria, and they were doing a tour with the Gates of Baal or wherever it was. And, and they were going around Britain and New York, and he was unveiling it and giving well, a speech. They, they, they laser printed them, and they put them in every city in, I think, every cap, most capital cities, didn't they? Going back a few years, and he unveiled the one. <clears throat> I think before he was way before he was Prime Minister, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, and when he was Mayor of London, I think it was, Chris. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, and, and if you look at all the shows he was on, like Chris, just going back to what Chris was saying there, he, he was going through the late 90s and up through the 2000s and into the 2010s. He was on... I mean, there were more shows than, than this here. Like, it was on Letterman. They were on a few show, other shows in America. Um, he was on Top Gear. All building this persona. The first time a prime minister, I would say, has been just like Trump as well. Trump was the same sort of pr- thing, wasn't he? Mm. Yeah. Being lined up. and Just being lined up. To demoralise everyone, I think, because he's not, he's not stupid, as he's playing a part of someone who's a bit clumsy and stupid. Like I, got, I got, to, I got um, shown a video of um, uh, him going just about he, before he went like to do a speech, and he his hair was all neat and tidy. He deliberately fucked his yeah. hair up before he Shuffles went. Shuffles it up like that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he looks like the retarded yeah. Winston Churchill. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you reckon they did something? That's I think he even puts that with Trump. It's all an act, mate. It's I think he even puts that little stoop on a bit. That little stoop, I think, he even puts that on a little bit. What is is sort of like the, the, the way he's got he like a little, his butt. Yeah. yeah, little hunch, yeah. 
I'll never forget when he came out that time. He's like Danny DeVito playing the penguin in Batman. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He so. came out that time with a tray of with the tray of tea and coffee for the news reporters. Yeah, 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 yeah. In the middle of some scandal. And they, yeah. they were yeah. asking him questions he, he wouldn't wearing, say anything. He was wearing a crumpled blue dress shirt with like a woolly jumper over the top. It was a rugby top. A, no, a rugby shirt. Yeah. Then he had a woolly hat. He looked like an absolute penis. And yeah. it's like, you know, <laughs> you know, you can say on one hand, but you know, money doesn't buy finesse or style, but to me it looked like someone that was deliberately dressed up to look stupid. There's also Chris, a video Chris, of him. Chris mentioned that video. Sorry, Andy. That video no, no, you just on. talked about there. That was he equated that to Don from uh, what was it? Sexy Chris, the film Sexy Beast, because he he was saying he was saying to the reporters to get them off track. Tick tick the tea. Have the tea. Tick a tea. You were, you were tea. diverting them. Yeah. Right? Diverting them. Uh, and yeah, they'd just ask like, him a question, and all he'd say was that have a tea. Take drink a tea. tea. Yeah, drink yeah, a tea. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's all they did uh, as well. They backed down and they took it eventually, didn't they? Do the job, do the job. You know, yeah. can remember uh, Sexy Beast when he was doing that, trying to convince him to do that job. Job, um, yeah. Uh, I, I video. I got a video of a psychologist or a psychiatrist actually who broke him down and basically said these are his traits. He's basically a, psych, a psychopath. Um, I didn't There's send a you that video him, a bit right? long. There's a video of um, right when uh, the climate change, global climate warming change, started getting popular and trendy. Um, everyone's all the politicians started riding to work who lived in mm. London, like riding to the yeah, yeah. yeah. And there's a video of him cutting up some driver, whether it's a truck set, <laughs> and then beeping his horn. And he turns around and tells him to fuck off and gives him the finger. <laughs> yeah, I remember the video. <laughs> yeah. You call him a pleb as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah, right. It's yeah. really funny. Quality. <laughs> just, he's, he's like, he's got, he's, he looks like a retard. He's got his suit on with a helmet on. He just looks a complete dick. But as yeah. far you know, people, we've got some comments and like people saying, you know, he's an actor, and we're not. We're certainly not suggesting that this guy isn't an actor. He's a great actor. But, but yeah. I think but what we're really critiquing here is is the role that he played. Yeah. Um, and I, like Trump, I, I have to admit, I very much enjoyed the character that Boris played, especially when it came to how he was dealing with the Soviet Union and all yeah. that stuff with the parties. You know, people, um, a lot of a lot of normies get still very upset about him breaking all the rules. Yeah, but I've said it once, right, and I'll say it again. I think that was the best thing that he ever did. Like, Disclosure, because, because that that yeah. acting alone actually sort of woke up millions of people that were sitting on the fence that really inside the bottom of their heart, they knew the Soviet Union was total bullshit, right? Mm. But they weren't quite ready to have, they didn't really have the impetus to say, that's fucking bullshit, I'm not taking part. But when those parties happened, and yeah. it was blatantly obvious that the people in the know with the highest level of security clearance in the country to, uh, that were sat at the Cobra meetings that really knew the truth, were literally ignoring it like mm. nothing was wrong. <laughs> That the light bulb went on for millions of people. But, then, I think. And, and also, we were to blame let to know that. We were, we were let we, we were let to know that on purpose, like the Ferguson guy driving up to wherever, saying his eyes sighted one, and like Wancock having grabbing that bird's ass um, on video. <laughs> we were to know this, weren't we? For a reason to make everyone angry. I don't, I don't know some psychological reason that I'm sure Susan Mickey knows, but we don't. Some reason why they put these things out in the in the public, weren't they? Well. Yeah. I yeah, definitely I think there's a, a level of a level of mockery involved for sure, but it, it's to create the mm. the Hegelian dialect. It's actually to create the discourse. If you have someone like the Joker, who is played by either Trump or Boris, you know, throwing these one-liners in that's giving you hints about stuff, and, and their actions are really showing you how you know Trump was the, stood there and the only person that didn't wear a mask in the whole room. You know, Boris did, yeah. was in, it was playing the same role a lot, and I think that's that's quite an important parallel. That, While still rolling out the Britneys to everybody, yeah. So the, the the plan just continued without, even though they were just playing this comedian, and and who better at the end of it if you think you've got a bumbling buffoon to say he ruined it all and the government were inept? It weren't a, a planned effort; it was just ineptness. Well, the, the best thing, the, the best thing they could get everyone get everyone to think that it was ineptness. No. Yeah, but I, that's straight, absolutely but... right. But I think also the other side of the coin is, and this is what's coming out in the uh, the inquiries, is that all of the um, mistakes, misgivings and blatant piss-taking that the, the administration in charge at the time did, all that's going to do is bolster the argument that next time this happens, it needs be to be stricter, yeah. tougher, more yeah. instant. Maybe it might even be the suggest suggestion that the planning of the response to the second coming of the you-know-what shouldn't mm. even be presided over f by humans because they're just too corrupt and stupid. Why don't we just give it to Paladin? 
Mm. Yeah, and, exactly. And Paladin yeah. will make all the decisions, <laughs> and, it, and it will just come out of your TV or yeah. your, 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 your soul. Out. It'll come out your soul. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Basically, it'll just be beamed straight into your head, which is pretty yeah. much what happened to a lot of people anyway. Yeah. Even before they'd had their um, their Michael Chip or their neuro. Uh, uh, N- N- Nigel Watson, on the yeah, Nigel yeah, Watson yeah. in the chats chat said uh, when he went into hospital. He he came out a different person as well. I, I saw I got a picture of him when he came out of hospital. He looked like he'd seen the gates of hell. Yeah. It looked like he'd been in been reprogrammed because he obviously didn't have anything wrong with him. Let's be fair. Um, it, it just yeah, it, it, I think they'd gone in there to be uh, retrained or something or swapped. Just a picture to so have his program <laughs> minorly adjusted a little bit. Yeah, like, yeah. Nah, just don't be... play the Joker too much. Just to have his black mirrorism tweaked. Yeah. So the, the, uh, these are a couple of Boris's friends. I just thought I'd put these in. Um, the guy, the the older guy there with the white hair, he is, um, he's called Alex, Alexandrov Lebedev. Um, sorry, Alexander uh, Le, Eugenovich Lebedev. And he is an ex-KGB agent. And his son's Boris, one of Boris's best mates. So he's, that's the guy with the beard. Boris is big in the Soviet Union and the Soviet Union. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 So he, he, these are Russian uh, billionaires. I mean, what, did you hear this on the, any of the BBC news or anything like that uh, during all this stuff when Trump were getting battered for being Rus- friends with the Russians and stuff? Boris no. never. There was actually a documentary done about it, um, which was an interesting uh, watch. And I knew somebody who knows that guy with the beard. Um and um, she she was on a private plane uh, giving a vitamin drip to Johnson going to Italy to to visit that Baron Lebedev. Uh, they used to have private they have private had private parties probably still do at his uh, Italian villa. I wonder what else you can get on drip at those private look parties. Look at this, then. yeah. Look at uh, the exactly, uh, yeah. just enlarge <laughs> the um, enlarge that. Look at the name of this look. Lebedev. And no, his look fo- at his full name. Eugenevi Al- Alexandrovich Lebedev Baron. Oh, he's his title is Baron Lebedev. Yeah, yeah, yeah but look at this. Lebedev. Lebedev and his father own Palazzo Terra Nova. Yeah. That's in Italy. Terra Nova. Yeah. Is that a palace? Palazzo? I guess. Yeah, well, it is a palace. Yeah, it's, on, it's a hilltop palace in Italy. Um, but he's, it, the, the barony that he got given was via... I think it was Theresa May that gave it him on Boris's... Because I think prime ministers, when they're coming into power, can nominate people and, right. and ask the outgoing prime minister to, to give them a knighthood or a barony. So he's now Baron Lebedev, even though he's a Russian. Baron Lebedev. <laughs> and his father... He's got, he's got a palace uh, in, in Italy. Oh, he's, he lived, yeah. Well, he's got a place in, in London. They, they own uh, the Evening Standard and the Independent newspaper. That's what they own. And guess guess whose father used to own the independent newspaper? Is Gary it? Simmons' his father, who Boris married. For what? Yeah, you can't make this shit up if you want it to, mate. Um, yeah, so they, they own what, the, TV. Blonde, the blonde chick he married. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, her father owned the independent. Right. Yeah. They keep it in the family, these people. The extended family. Yeah, anyway. Let's move on to Boris's mother. So, I mean, this was the one person out of all of it, uh, out of all of them, that we actually had sympathy for, didn't we, Chris? Yeah. Well, his mother, uh, Charlotte. Stanley, Stanley broke his jaw for starters, didn't he? Her nose, yeah, smashed her face. Yeah. Um, lovely Stanley Johnson. We'll play a video of him in a sec when we go on, get on to him. Is that his uh, old man? Yeah, Stanley Johnson yeah, is his yeah, old yeah, man. I've yeah, I've seen a few videos of his old man. Yeah. His, his, his mum. His mum ended up in a mental asylum. Oh, I'm not surprised. Yeah. yeah. In 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 a mental asylum, Andy. Yeah. That um, she, she. Well, I'll, I'll start at the beginning. Her. Fa- that this is where he gets D- Johnson gets his black cube ancestry from. This lady. Yeah. Okay. Her oh, father yeah, was Sir the mother, James through the maternal line. Always. Yes. Her father was Sir James Edmund Sanford Fawcett, President of the European Commission for Human Rights. That was her father. 
So Boris Johnson is actually a, a probably like of Kazarian bloodline then. <laughs> <laughs> like the, the dude on the last slide he was with, like I mean, he's pretty yeah. long, like, like top top level Kazarian international yeah. guy. He's from Russia. He's a baron. He has castles in Italy. Just a coincidence, Lance. These people aren't re don't really come from any country. This These is a are, holographic you know, country. What you call the globalists? They have no allegiance to any yes. one country. Yeah, like, they've got you, you, dual passports coming out their ass. Like you just showed, you could be an intelligence asset in one country, mm. have palaces in another, and then be a baron in a country that is apparently at odds with the, the one that you were an intelligence asset. Yes, in. exactly. But look, they they own banks. That them Russians, they own a bank. I forget what it's called now, in, in, and that's in, still in Russia. You know, um, yeah. so so her father worked for the UN, assisted with the writing of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, and was part of the International Monetary Foundation fund. Sorry, he worked for the Foreign Office, which we think we know what that means, um, and British embassies, and he was director of studies at the Royal Institutes of International Affairs, which was Tavistock, isn't it, or Chatham House, as we call it now. Wow. Which was funded by the Rockefeller Fund. Anyway, so that that's her. That's his. That's just his mother. That that's what, that's doing a light version of what what was. Uh, he was a member of the Queen's Council. He's a Knight of the Inner Temple, um, knight, and he was bit which was based on the Knights Templars. Um, yeah. So yeah. So you're painting a picture here that Boris isn't just some sort of like psychopathic, sycophantic, corrupt buffoon that weaselled his way into power doing anything that he could mm -mm. so that he was staying power. This guy is actually whether we like it or not quite an important player from the the you know who bloodlines that are behind everything yes correct yes. me if i'm wrong dom mm. wasn't he told by either his mother or his grandmother when he was very young that he was gonna when he was grown up he was gonna be the prime minister of england his, his sister said was that it sister, he used, was it? you know well no he, he, she didn't tell, she told the story uh rachel johnson said he used to walk around saying he was gonna be king of england then he changed that at some point to say he was going to be prime minister of England, right. um, and he and his nanny. Because I, I was, yeah, his nanny. There you his go. Na he was his nanny. He used to have baths with his nanny. Um, yeah, it's a bit weird. As you do. Yeah, it, odd, odd. There was when, when Stanley Johnson worked for the Rockefellers. It came back to England, um, and then they ended up in Brussels working for the UN, um, and they went to a school in in the UN. And when his mother went back to England to uh, Maudsley. Um, mental hospital to have be ele have electric electric shocks and everything. By the way, Maudsley was run by MK MK Ultra doctors as well. By the way, um, what else? <laughs> uh, they were looked after by a nanny uh, who used to have. She was over six foot. This nanny apparently a chain smoking nanny, <laughs> and uh, it, you couldn't write all this stuff. What, his she, wet nurse. <laughs> his wet nurse. Yeah, and she used to have baths with him. And apparently, she said that he was going to be prime minister. So yeah, there was uh, the nanny comes from that special nanny nanny school. The um, I oh, the Omen nanny school. <laughs> yeah, Omen nanny school. Yeah, the, the, from a special nanny school that train all. The, is that the, is that some offset of Eton? Yeah, the, the, the I, nanny, I need to get that name now. Nanny do my head in. Yeah. Anyway, a, a, her grandfather, his mother's grandfather, was Elias Avery Low, a Lithuanian uh, black square background, who was an American uh, photographer at the Oxford University and Princeton University. So some, some of these people um, were quite up within universe. What you find is, I think, that they're not all famous. They're all just ingrained in the woodwork. They're like sleeper cells, a lot of these people who you see their family members. Anyway, the, uh, the Maudsley Hospital was modelled on, uh, was doing eu eugenic sterilisation and he did a swap with Nazi Germany in the 30s as well. That's where his mother went, just to give a bit of background on that. And Oh, yeah, and that's some of the pictures she painted while she was in uh, the Maudsley Hospital. Let's have a look. How very pedestrian of her. Wait a minute. <laughs> Holy po... No, 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 no. That looks like you know what? Someone... Is that... No, that... Oh, he's got his hand on his knee. Yeah. Right. Okay. Where did your mind take you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> we got a full metal rabbit t-shirt. Yeah, the yeah. full metal rabbit t-shirt really spanned me out then. Wow. <laughs> yeah, Podesta would definitely have those on the wall. I see somebody in the chat earlier said uh, Boris's real name is Alexander. And in this yeah. left-hand picture at the top, it says Alexander Painting. Yeah. He, he was called Alexander uh, for, yeah. for a long time until he started calling himself Boris. 
Again, fits fits more into the character. See again, yeah, Morris. that yeah fits with the more bumbling. Yeah, bumbling. But that, that hospital, kind of... the, the the Maudsley Hospital, was funded by the Rockefeller Foundation and the Kenanigi Foundation. I mean, again, we're going to coincidences here. Stanley Johnson worked directly for John D. Rockefeller the third, and his wife goes into a hospital that's funded by the Rockefeller Foundation. Hi, These yeah. are the mad. Uh, they're not the links out. They're not coincidences. High-level farming class is what we're talking about here. This is like the upper management level in the administration of human farming. It gave the feeling when we did the presentation going back two or three years that she was just there to breed. breed. The bloodline. Well, a lot of the women are, aren't they? Mm. Well, because the bloodline, in this particular culture, the bloodline has to come through the woman. Yeah. You're only classed as a black cube organisation member if he comes through the, the, the mother. Yeah, there's always a maternal team. line. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, There's always a maternal line. Now, his, his father, Stanley, and we'll play that video in a sec, uh, Lance. Uh, there's a video, Andy, if okay. you want to search I'll, it out. It says Stanley I'll Johnson queue, on it. I'll just queue it up. Yeah, Look, keep going, mate. Um, so, Stanley Johnson, and he, I mean, he's another lifetime actor, but he seems to be the guy that sort of sold the whole, sold the family down the river. Did he well, write a book, Dom? Yeah, he wrote several. Yeah, um, yeah. It's there, look. He wrote a book called The Virus. That that's it, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was actually called the Marburg. And um, wasn't this this was pre Divock? No? Oh yeah, pre Divock. Yeah, 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 early eighties, yeah. eighty two. Yeah. The first time I saw the, a copy of it, it was like already like looked like a very old paperback book. It was crusty. Yes. Do you know what I mean? All like ripped yeah. up. Yeah, and it he looks extremely out. like like Boris looks extremely like his old man as well. Mm. Well, his ancestry is Turkish German, of royal ancestry, by the way. Um, he's descended from the Prince Prince Paul of Wuttenberg, fourth child and second son of King Frederick I, and brother of King William of Wuttenberg. That's a bit like the Sausage Fingers lineage, because he's, yeah. he's like, you know, saxe coburg Goffa. you know, apparently they're German, but yeah. also Greek. And he's also directly related to Vlad the Impaler, a.k.a. Dracula. And exactly. he's got his own estate in Transylvania because his heritage is so strong in Transylvania. Mm. It's mad, isn't it? It's crazy. Glo globalists. That's what the von means. Pfeffel family, ennobled von Pfeffel, was originally from Bavaria. <laughs> <laughs> Which is where the alleged Illuminati was. Yes. Bavarian family. Illuminati. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 1796. Uh... In, in, in that, uh, the first book, Life Without Birth, I mean, the title there, he's writing this in 1970, just after finishing working with John D. Rockefeller III and uh, and the World Bank and whatever he was working on. And it, it says, uh, a journey through the third world in search of the population explosion. Action on population front means somehow trying to slow down or even halt this rate of growth by reducing the number of babies who are born each year. Action the altern on, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the alternative to this, both pessimists and optimists are agreed, is inevitable. If the number of new births cannot be reduced, the number of deaths each year must increase. Wow. Enter Health Chancellor Gates. Well, who, is, who is this dude? <laughs> the final solution. Who is this dude? Is he just an author or was he a politician like Boris and then an author? Like, what, he was apparently a, a green politician. You know, he, he was a conservative. Right, right, early on, yeah, he's a Tory. Oh, he's so from if he's the, a Green, so he's well, like, on board with Agenda 2030 and all that. Oh, he's all of it, mate. Yeah, all yeah, of yeah. it, all of it. He's saved the whales. And we had a video of him with Carrie Simmons again, and it looked like an orchestrated meeting, didn't it, Chris? Yeah, it looked like there were 10 people there. 10 people for the cameras. Yeah, we didn't even show so, a crowd, did it? Just so he's basically on. like telling Boris, like, like, this is your life, you know, this is what you're doing. But um, the Amish Inquisition have just said here, funny how Bojo didn't take notice of his dad's book, More Kids Than Soft Mike. Well, he's got seven kids. <laughs> <laughs> Who's Soft Mike? Yeah. Yeah, soft Mike. Mick, it's a no yeah. no oh, Soft tape. Mick. Oh, is that a northern <laughs> thing? I wouldn't know. Yeah. I think it is, is it? Is it northern yeah, it thing? is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. More um, kids than Soft Mick? Yeah, Soft Mick, man. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know what but it means. He's got, he's got, he's got seven kids as well. Stanley Johnson. Oh, is he? But tell him. Oh, yeah, he's, got, he's okay. Problem. He's got seven kids. The dude yeah. with seven kids. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Um, nice one. And, and Boris is. So let me get this right. He's related to uh, King George the First, illegitimately, of course. King James the First, as well. Uh, yeah. So, and King Charles the First of England as well. So he, he's actually related directly to Sausage Fingers. Is um, 
Yeah, that's so he's got a sausage Johnson. bloodline. Yeah. He's got a sausage bloodline. Yeah. <laughs> he's got a Cumberland bloodline. He's got those chip, yeah, yeah, chip and genetics. <laughs> yeah, man. Wow. You should, mate, you really missed Oh, yeah, I know. Sorry. Like, like, Andy yeah, PG, yeah, get yeah. your hands on those buttons. I was intro. I was like, this is boys. good, mate. This is good. We need uh, to... Gosh. There you That's go. about right. fucking time. Uh, sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Carry on, Dom. Um, the, the the book you were talking about, uh, the one there, I'm not going to say the V word again. Um, the virus. Yeah, the Marburg, <laughs> it was called before, uh, was re-released in 2021. From It was <laughs> first brought out, I think, in 1982. Uh, and it's got... This is what it says. Reveals uncanny parallels with the current Divock. The outbreak of a mysterious disease, the origins of which are traced to a medical student affected by a green monkey. Green, yeah. Affected by a green monkey. That's your yeah. monkey pox right there. Yeah. Oh, what? Yeah. So, so in, an, in another book, I don't think I put this on here, but he wrote a book recently uh, called Stanley, I Presume. And a, and a section of that book, he actually admits that he was um, recruited by MI6, even even to the point where he had a suit made on Savile Row with a with a, a pocket to fit a gun in. But he didn't join. He said he pulled out. Right. Is this <laughs> Boris, sorry? Is this Boris or is it his dad? His dad. His dad. Right. Yeah. Stand, I can't, I can't stand imagine man. Boris had a, had a, they give him a gun at MI5. Yeah, didn't have a chance, did he? The Boris, you know, he were in it whether he were like it. Look, fortunate we weren't born into that family. So yeah, yeah right. you queued that video. What I wanted to show you this, I've played it a few times uh, before on other things, but um, this is Stanley Johnson being interviewed, um, where he's talking about the ideal population of Great Britain. Okay, so I roll the vid. Roll the vid. You have to get population under control as well, because if you look at it in sheer economic terms, how can you sustain increases in per capita income? at a time when you have rising population without rising economic growth. Whereas if you have a declining um, population, which is what I would aim for, then of course even a stable economic growth situation will give you increases in per capita income. So that's where I stand on do you, that. Do you, do you have a sense of what the carrying capacity of Britain is or of the, uh, uh, of the world as a whole? Or? Well, Britain, I'd put it at 10 or 15 million. Um, I, mean, <laughs> I think that'd be absolutely fine. I mean, that would do us really splendidly. At, at, at a limit, 2025, I think it's complete nonsense that we are now confronted with an islander, would you believe it, of 70 million, 70 million people. I wrote a paper, I think it's the only paper the Conservative Party has ever published, and it was published as an old Queen Street paper in, in June mm. 1972, oddly enough, and it was called uh, Britain Needs a Population Policy. And, um, and you, you could still argue that today, I mean, right now. I certainly could, I certainly could, but what has happened, of course, is that we have all been, as it were, shunted aside, off, shunted off course by what you might call the rise of political correctness, because you can't talk about this now without being saying you're anti-feminist, because you're telling women what to do with their bodies, or you're racist, because you're saying it's the browns and the blacks and the yellow races who mustn't have, um, have or you're left-winger, because you're really trying to get at you know, the capitalist society. So it's a very, very difficult one now. And I would say that, at the very least, the governments of the world have to start talking. The government of this country has to talk, uh, start talking seriously about immigration. Ten to fifteen. He was getting out of breath. He was getting out of breath just talking. It, there. Sounds like he had a half packet of digestives. In his yeah. Throat, it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The crumb, crumbs coming out of his mouth as he was talking. <laughs> yeah. like how, what, what an absolute posh twat. <laughs> like, honestly, <laughs> he's not. He's not. A, a he's not a sharp tongue as his son. No. He's not a sharp tongue as his son. How very he? raw, raw. Hence why he wasn't chosen. He, he's. If you think about it, right, he. He sums up these people that go, go into these, I don't know, I'd say a private members club, they're having a brandy and a cigar, that they have a conversation and then 20 million people disappear. Exactly. You know, it's yeah, just yeah. Exactly. A, it, well, it, this it, is why I talk about the farmer class. You can see the mentality. He, he, you know, he's, he's literally just looking at humans as, as some sort of like commodity to be controlled. Yeah. yeah that, and, and, and it's so blatant that it's almost like... That's the default position. It doesn't even need to be mentioned or, or explained. It's just that's the way it is. That's the way the guy talks. The strange thing is I've met people, um, just everyday people, who actually say that we should have half the amount of people or whatever in Britain. They don't think about what they're actually saying. So they're actually saying, whether they're repeating what he, people like he's saying. Go on, Chris. No, I'm going to say it's not, it's not their 
it's not their thought process that they're, they've been pro, 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 programmed to come out with that shite because it's on TV all the time. You know, everyone's saying it. David Attenborough is now saying it with his husky <laughs> voice, isn't it? After showing us all yeah, the Marvel is. life stuff. You know, everyone respects him and he's such a fantastic beacon of England. But then he's now he's talking about population control and everything's got is plastic. Is he eugenics, mate? Yeah, they are. You yes, of course, yeah. Is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Summed up that, simpler. Yeah. Anyone, that, anyone that actually. I got, I got, you know what? Is... Go on. No, I'm going to say when you're on about uh, Stanley's wife, it seems like her dad threw her under the bus, just like Stanley threw Boris under the bus. Or they've, they've got this different kind of. Um, I don't know. It's totally different system where they just literally push their. It's like their kids have been pushed into that situation. They've got, got no option on it. No, this this is what I'm talking about, right? I've said this before on the show, right? Not that I sympathise with dark occultists at all, but their children that are born into that family, like you said, they haven't got a choice who their family's born into. So you fucking think what they've been through, like during their childhood. Yeah, it's not like they choose. It's not that they choose to become a dark occultist. There's very, very few that actually make it out of the the family alive. It's like Mm. a trans millennial, trans generational super corporation of peasant farmers. There's one that you're born into. You're groomed from birth to look at the population of peasants as exactly the same as a farmer looks at cattle. Mm. Exactly the same to be yeah. managed, controlled, manipulated, uh, Britney speared at our yeah. will, uh, you know, <laughs> to be lobotomized. You think as well, like, yeah. you think as well, like, a hole in them, stick your arm inside. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. On. You think we've, yeah. we've heard the mentality of our man Stan there, like what he thinks mm. the government's just more got to do something about the <laughs> population, blah, blah, blah. blah, blah. Yeah. Right. And then, so we've seen the mentality straight out of the horse's mouth, and then. But you think about it, they can't just go and outright overtly murk people with bombs Whack and stuff like that. Yeah, they, yeah. they can actually kill more peasants doing it covertly yeah. through big big pharma yeah, or, mate, or however. I, I'm just going to a tiny segue here to uh, this thing I'm about to say. I watched something on Netflix called Painkillers, which is a one series, six episode thing. And it's all about the family, the Sacklers with oxycodone. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah oxycodone. Whoa, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's wicked. Everyone right. needs to watch it. Um, and it, and it's exactly the same. Basically, they worked the Sack- out... The Sackler family. The Sackler family, yeah. It was about the start when they had the idea to create it, why they created it, or, you know, to make as much money as possible. That's what they said in there. I no, 12 argue, people. 12 people's <coughs> pain. Yeah. It, I would argue that it, it was probably for more like destabilisation or, you know, just for the, the reasons to attack America. But they reckon it killed half a million people. And you, you think, right, to, to go to war costs a fucking lot of money yeah doesn't it bombs like missiles like paying the wages of troops all of that stuff you think how much less it would cost for them to set up a lab with a few six or ten scientists in and be like right make me some lethal pathogen and we could just blame it on the flu well here's the thing kind of thing and then like then get the recipe then Mm. mass produce it and release it it's much Mm. more cheaper to do or it's even better if you design a drug and then peasants have to buy it and kill themselves oh absolutely yeah 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 you essentially Mm. they're buying the the weapon that's being fired at them and give them the pain give them the pain yeah then give them a drug that because as well supposedly ends as well the this they're, they're, don't forget these dark occultists their retarded mentality is they know about natural law right mm. and they know about karma it's a very real thing and their their retarded mind view and world view is that if they're not physically doing it if they're doing it to themselves the peasantry then they bypass the karma and yeah. if they make it sort of quite blatantly obvious by you know yeah. making you have to read the small print or look at the, what, the even just the listed side of it. Don't forget, they're not the ones who are putting the trigger. The peasants are actually you know they're, they're the willingly self, queuing contract. up for this shit yeah. now. Self yeah. farming contract, isn't it? Yeah, it's a contract. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah, it's even like going to war is a contract. All all soldiers decide to go to war, don't they? Yeah. You think, right, you bit, think when this goes later it, yeah. on down the line, probably not even in any of our lifetimes, when everyone's plugged into Robo Must Neuralink system, <laughs> all they've got to do is then just ping you a quick virus yeah, yeah, through, yeah, through, through the transmitter. You don't even have to go to a no. peasant uh, Britney Spears. You don't even have to queue up for your Britney well, Spears. Well, then they'll link it, it into, link it into Windows, won't they? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> antivirus. <laughs> for your upgrade. Yeah. <laughs> your McAfee antivirus. Upgrade. Anyway, we'll move on to other advice. <laughs> Nice one. So th- this is uh, Carrie, uh, Johnson's wife. Well, she looks like a cat. <laughs> <laughs> is that what that horror movie? Horror movie is it called Carrie, where she's covered in blood? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it? yeah. It looks yeah. a bit like the burn up that as well. And so th- this enough, is her doing a, a, a play at, col- at uh, college or university. 
A play, you say? A Crowley play, yes. A Crowley play, of course. Yeah. Um, wow, look at some of the other shots. Mate, look at the top left. Oh, shit. Yeah. Look at the floor. I know. And these were put out there as well. I mean, if they want to stop these pictures going out, they can very easily stop all this stuff going out, can't they? Well, yeah. And you it know, can be erased, really and it can be erased quite um, effectively sometimes. Like look, at, look at dude in the middle. Look, look at his, his on his right hand. He's got the inverted pentagram. So when he puts his Has hand he? up like that, it's, yeah, it's an inverted pentagram. Wow, yeah. There's so much to see on there. Even it looks you... like he's got on his other hand. You can't quite see because it, it looks like, yeah, symbol. square and compass. Yeah. However, towards the end of this uh, presentation on Johnson, there is a link up back uh, to Crowler as well, uh, which is very interesting. But. Her grandmother, Carrie's grandmother, uh, Hilda Harrison, great-grandmother of Carrie, was a lover of great-grandfather Herbert Henry Hasquiff. She was seeing him on the side. The first Earl of Oxford. Um, Asquith was Prime Minister from 1908 to 1916. That would make Carrie a cousin of Helen Bonham Carter. The Bonham Carter family, CB. Her father, Matthew Simmons, co-founder of The Independent in 1986, Simmons was appointed a strategy director of the BBC World Service. Um, he's also executive director of the Larry Ellison Foundation, her father. Larry Ellison owns Oracle. Oracle got all the contracts into all the governments around, most of the governments around the world, if you remember. Um, there's a big are about it and oracle larry ellison worked for a company with his business partner or future business partner who got a contract from the cia and the project was it was called project oracle so they left this company and set up oracle and their first customer was the cia <laughs> <laughs> so larry ellison's business was set up by the cia it's like, it's like the plot for you the best like, shit up, fictional, fictional novel ever, but it's not, it's true. Yeah. Um, Dom Lorraine uh, just put in the chat about yeah. um, Carrie Simmons getting attacked by John Warboys in 2000. That's right. Well, yeah, that, I mean, that was in the... I've cut, Do you know what? This is a trip over. It's not even... So John Warboys, I don't know if you remember John Warboys, uh, he was a taxi driver that was attacking women in London. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I knew the name. I couldn't put the story to it. Yeah, okay. Well, I'll Carrie remember. Simmons apparently was, was... What he was doing, he was drugging drinks, giving them a drink while they were in the taxi and then attacking them um, sexually sometimes, I think, and other times. But most of these women were unconscious or whatever and he put them at side at road and drove off or something like that. But Carrie Simmons got drugged and she managed to escape, apparently. She probably had a high tolerance level to tranquilizers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, the story... <laughs> right. her, her family, though, as well, her, her great-uncle, I think it was, uh, Major Tom Harnett Harrison, DSO OBE, was attached to Z Special Unit in World War II, a branch of the Allied Intelligence Bureau. And her other uncle was Air Vice Marshal Sir Charles Putnam Simmons. As Mark Devlin keeps saying, none of, the, none of these parents seem to be plumbers. <laughs> no, they're all fucking military, ex-military, you know, high-level weirdos. Yeah, there was so. I mean, there's so much more to to that. Um, that me and Lorraine actually, I found a link. The nanny, um, I've forgotten her surname now. Anyway, he's, Stanley's new wife has the sur same surname or uh, as um, the nanny, and I thought, bloody hell, are they related? Anyway, it's, it gets even worse. It, well, same worse. It gets even madder than that. She was actually married. She took the surname off her ex-husband. And he, his ex-girlfriend was Jane Asher, who Paul McCartney lived with in the 60s. <laughs> 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 he, so I've got some, a whole more research to come out on on uh, Carrie Simmons and Stanley. Uh, yeah, And then they end up doing a Save the Whale um, sort of, what were it, what were it Chris? Uh, uh, they were stood on a stage in middle of London yeah, like talking about yeah, saving whales. Yeah, that was the one you were on about earlier where there were no yeah. one there. It was so like there. Who staged for media to see. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, it's, so anyway, it's, it's just odd, these odd connections that, as uh, human vibrations always say, the templates that seem to overlap each other. 
Yeah, because at, the, at this level that these players are, uh, or these actors are at, it sort of doesn't really matter whether they're in uh, military, industrial, uh, entertainment, politics, government. Mm. It's like they the, just get like, assigned a sector. Yeah, because they're like. not really working in those sectors. What they're working for is the parasite agenda. Yeah. So whether you're prime minister or or top of or a doctor. Um, <laughs> or, or, or yeah, or the leading doctor for big pharma, or you know, or whatever. You're, you're, just who playing, you're, you're actually, you're actually set, all, yeah. all really at the same level because you're 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 operating different mechanics within the same thing. Yes, but you're yeah. st you're all probably working at exactly the same level, mm. you know. And but maybe from their sort of point of view, whether you're running the country or you're or you're running Michelle Pfeiffer, or yeah. or, or you know Goldman think, Sachs, um, it, it's pretty relevant. I think news readers and. Uh, you know the, the faces on TV. Those I think they've got a lot more clout. Some of them, not all of them. Like Jeremy you think Vine, people like uh, Tucker Carlson and Piers Morgan, people like that. Well, there's, a, there's a reason Jeremy Vine's on TV and then afternoon he's on the radio as well. What's the other one? I the like CNN. Yeah. The, um, uh, Anderson, Anderson Cooper. Yeah, he's a fucking yeah. retard. Parasite. Because, uh, you know yeah. It, Vanderbilt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I was about to say he's probably the best example of this. You know, from proper, a, from proper a, bloodline, yeah. military, industrial intelligence links, etc., etc., etc. But like Chris was just saying, there are certain ones on British TV that you can see that have just got these pivotal roles, whether it's. Good Morning TV, whether it's, uh, mm. you know, on these top radio stations, whatever. So the most likelihood on this side of the pond is those are the guys that have, you know, sat at the brand table. We've just witnessed one, haven't we, Lance? We've just witnessed the Tavistock one. Yeah. Garraway. Yeah, yeah. Just witnessed and, it. And your brilliant work on that. And you on, think, on that, right, right, I mean, look at Bono. Right, let's take Bono, for example, yeah. <laughs> Um, he was, you know, <laughs> from, from, he, he's got a massive following, hasn't he? In, in pop music bit, culture, yeah. right? But what, he doesn't fucking make music anymore. He talks about... Cl global climate warming change and with stupid politics and equality yeah. and stuff like that. He's yeah. like, all they've done is got, dig the, got a load dig of that video out to listen for a brick. to him. Yeah. They've got a load of people to listen to him and then he can just spit Agenda 2030 at him. Yeah. Isn't it funny Which that him, him and Sean Penbuff went to see, uh, what is it? What's his name? In uh, Ukraine. I, Zelensky. I sent Lance a video, they both, Chris. They both look exactly the same, don't yeah. they? Sean Penbuff. Yeah, they do, right? yeah. Yeah, so they do. Are, are, we play, are we playing this video? Yeah, we'll just play this Bono one for a sec. Just have a breather from this before I go into uh, Boris's schools. So this, this video that clip that you sent me is called Bono Geldorf. This is crazy. It's Mental, a, man. Do, do you reckon they knew that this camera was rolling? No, no, to, it looks yeah. like it's a bit off cuff, doesn't it? So that to me looks like they're taking a break from some kind of meeting, like big conference yeah, and yeah. like that, and they're just being, you know, introduced and you know. So why would fucking Bono be at a conference, like a, pol a politics conference? And look at the state of Geldof. Geldof looks yeah. like I don't know a ho homeless guy. He, does, he, just he, always looked, looked, he always looked like a yeah, homeless yeah, guy. Yeah. Horrible, yeah. horrible. Yeah. But um, yeah, Crafty. it was crazy to see that kind of very casual interaction between Bono Gel Geldorf and uh, Tony B. Liar. Well, Tony B. Liar was just st st stood there like if a you gimp think the about it, Lance, time, right? Like... Bono, World Economic Forum, young global leader. Blair, young global leader. Putin, young global leader. Do you know how old that clip is, Dom? No, well, it's, it, when Blair's in politics, so I'd say mid 2000s, isn't it? Got to be mid 2000s. Putin looked pretty young there. He did, yeah. Yeah. Still but a there's, little fit. There's plenty of Blair other people. I just he, used Bono for an example, and coincidentally, you had that video. 
Yeah. Shot, but there's plenty of other people who yeah. I think who have just been put assigned a, a career path, whether it's entertainment, media, whatever, and they're, all they're doing is gathering following. So people listen to them, then they spit this WEF bullshit. Yeah, exactly. The, the Swabian bullshit out. Yeah, um, yeah. Let, just move on to Boris's school. I've got. I had a video to play, but it, it, it anyway. I had a, a sort. This guy here, Alex Renton, uh, he did a, a documentary about uh, the abuse that was going on while he was there. He's a couple of years older than Boris. And Boris was sent to this school called Ashdown House. Um, and the video showed that 75% of all prime ministers, politicians, judges, business leaders, MPs, police commanders, military officials, all went to some kind of boarding school. The rape house. Well, <laughs> yeah. The rape house. Um, uh, I mean, it looks look, like something from the fucking Adams family. Look at the building. Yeah. And the video of this guy here, um, and when I say it's got a copyright, it's one of those that you can actually use. You're not going to get a blitz for it, but we won't put it on. Um, Rachel said Rachel Johnson was the first girl to attend this school. So in the mid seventies, right, they didn't accept girls. It was an all boy school. But Stanley Johnson had so much clout. He rang the headmaster up and said, "My family's coming to this school from Brussels. His wife's just been put into a nut house. Uh, he's whacked her. Never gotten taken down for it." Um, and she's coming to this school because my boy's coming here and it's a feeder school for Eton. Um, and they said, all right, then yeah, we'll accept her. They didn't I even bet, have any... I bet, I bet she was popular. I bet she was. There were her and another girl, apparently. And she said, uh, in those days, the three Cs, the cane, cricket and classics, were fastidiously followed. <laughs> Boris Johnson has also said he was appalled at the teacher's liberal use of corporal punishment. Liberal Never mentioned sexual use. abuse, ever, right? Ever. Uh, but this guy, Alex Renton, goes on to say he was about 14 when Johnson arrived. But from week one or two, Alex Renton there said he was sexually abused by a teacher and given a fruit gum after. A fruit gum? A fucking fruit like gum, Like a mate. dentist gives you lollipop yeah, yeah, after, yeah, yeah. just to yeah. soothe the pain. Um, and what, what, that, what, this, what this documentary reminded me of, and I don't know if you can dig that out, it's, uh, Tim Fort it's under Tim Fortescue. Oh, okay. Is it? Yeah. I've got. Is it out of the seven you sent? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Tim Fortescue. Okay, let me just. Yeah, let me yeah. just. Uh, I thought you were going to ask me to rabbit hole something. And, like, no, no, uh, mate. No, like, no, you must be joking. No, uh, no. Okay, let's have a look. Here we go. Th this was a documentary made in 1995. It's never been shown again on TV. It was called uh, at Westminster Service or something like that. And it, they were just interviewing MPs. And this one minute, one two minute section came out of this. Tim Fortescue was a chief whip of Ted Heath's government. I'll just give you a clue oh, what it's Teddy about. Heath. Oh, yeah, Ted Heath. Yeah. They like to exposed this. him badly. It'll make your skin crawl. Anyone with any sense who was in trouble would come to the whips and, and tell them the truth. They'd say, no, this, I'm in a jam. Can you help? It might be debt. It might be um, a scandal involving small boys or any kind of scandal which um, a member seemed likely to be mixed up in, they'd come and ask if we could help. And if we could, we did. And we would do everything we can because we would store up brownie points. If, I mean, that sounds a pretty, pretty nasty reason, but it's one of the reasons is if we can get a chap out of trouble, then he'll, he'll do as we ask forever more. Gosh. Sorry, I didn't mean to play that again. Sorry. What, I mean, what an example to go to. The first type of scandal like that off, comes to Off mind. the top of your head. Oh, oh, some oh, trouble with some young boys. Or, or any other type of scandal. I mean... Jesus. Is that your go-to? That's the go-to? <laughs> that is the go-to one. Fuck. Yeah. Mental. That, that, that was an, an admission. I reckon that's the whole reason why that documentary was made. Wow. Going back to your karma thing, Andy. Um, yeah. Just to get, they put take that out it there. very seriously. Mm. I know some people don't even believe in it, but it's it's that's that's it doesn't matter if you believe in it; they believe in it and they mm. act on it. Mm. That that um, I mean that moment in time there of that. Um, that well, anyway, that puts makes your skin crawl. Anyway, Absolutely. We, storing up brownie points to get storing to get up brownie the boys points out of trouble. Yeah, uh, and there there's been. I forget how many teachers now taken down from that school when Boris was there. And by the way, Boris was there at that time. 
There's no doubt oh, about I'm that. I'm sure he was, yeah, yeah. And from 1960, he was there in the mid-70s and, and the abuse went on for 25 years from have 1969. Have you done a dig on the actual school, Dom? Yeah. Or, yeah, you yeah, have, yeah, yeah. It's been yeah, closed yeah. down now. Uh, the, it, who, who, was, was, like, who was running it? Who was the headmaster? Headmaster? He, what, what was the deal? Uh, it was called Billy Williamson and right. he was Billy <laughs> whacking people for fun. There's no right. talk of him being sexually abusing people, but he physically abused them. Okay. 100% physically abused them. They all, all of them say that. You More get than likely, it tends to, if they do that in the open, then they are doing, if they're, if they're ballsy enough to do that in the open, then I, often I, they do the, get. The, the, there was talk about them getting, like, whole, whacking whole classes, not just whacking one or two people, you know, absolutely kicking seven bells out of. Lining them all up. Well, apparently. Um, but what gets me is, if you became prime minister, and you were abused, or you knew people had gone to your school, friends, or wherever you've been abused. What would you, if you were re a real prime minister in control of everything, what would you do? You'd shut that shit down. You'd shut it, all of it down, wouldn't you? Yeah. And they can't. That shows you the mean. tie. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't it? When you saw Tony Blair there and the school he went to, um, a fetter school in in uh, in the same school as Nicky Campbell, who's now uh, coming out and telling of the abuse there. Uh, Blair was mentored by a known paedophile. That's a very common theme with these people, isn't it? Five paedophiles were in touch with Blair at that school. At the two schools he were at, at junior school and his secondary school. One of them run the Kinkora, it was Baron, I forget his name now, ran the Kinkora, was part of the Kinkora Boys uh, house or whatever it was in Ireland. Yeah. And he came over to give private business lessons. It's very much yeah. I haven't got time to do it right, but somebody should do a dive on how many uh, like schools like that or political training yeah, uh, centres you know. have had paedoph paedophilic issues. You'd be like, there's a fucking pattern here, man. Well, du du during um, 2020, and the lot, there, there was a, pl a, a police investigation. Um, I forget, was it called Operation Summer? I forget what, what the name was. And it included that school. But Boris Johnson wasn't interviewed. There was no sort of. There were obviously they, they arrested some teachers. One of them was in South Africa. He won't come back, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Um, sure. Yeah. So there's no. T yeah, these people. There's, uh, I remember a, there was a, there was a policeman from Salisbury, which isn't too far from from here where our HQ is, mm. and I forget his name now. But he was try. He was the uh, the one try who was given the evidence about Edward Heath. Right. And um, back back in the day, and he was the one trying to take it down, and he got specifically told from the very high up echelons of the police force, "This goes no further. Stop what you're doing now." Mm. He was fucking physically told, like, "You stop," well, like, and because it, it, of who they were investigating, and yeah. he he was outcast by all like the rest of the police force, all his peers, mm. the other like, I th I'm not he, I don't think he was the head of. Just one police station. I think he was like a regional thing or something like that. I, I, I don't know it yet. I think it was was it was it Kent? Was it the superintendent of Kent? I'm not sure. As well, he he took the case quite far. Yeah, Ted he to the point where they had witnesses who who that's it sort and of corroborated the, was, the evidence because he, he was like, using a strange hand or something like that. That's to it. touch and him he, with. He yeah. was he was. I think he left the force hand. because he was told like. Oh yeah, yeah. So he was retired that, at, that, at that point. He knew that it was like. Ooh. Life or death. Yeah, yeah. If he'd have carried on, he'd have probably it, been. It was well, he wasn't his pension now, wouldn't he? He's still probably got his pension now. It was in the newspapers that Ted Heath was actually a paedophile, but it also said he was a paedophile, but he wasn't a satanic paedophile, so it's all right. No, yeah, but he he That's knocked around with. Said that in the Times, yeah. He was doing stuff directly with Grandmaster Ginny, and um, there's a few. There was about six of them. Well, there was the the. Uh, the Liberal guy, what they call him, uh, Smith. Um, there was that, um, I forget the guy, was he a baron or something like that as, as they well? Were all top level. Um, yeah, and there's more of them, isn't there? There's, there's, yeah, there Sydney was, Cook. Sydney Cook was yeah. one of the worst, and he um, was actually allegedly worse than any of them. He was the, the nastiest motherfucker. I heard some out there. absolutely revolting stories that I wouldn't even want to like repeat. Yeah, yeah. So and this, all, all this research ties into um, the London Bang. Canal boats. Yeah, yeah, and Dol stuff uh, and the canal Dolphin system. Square and all the other yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Hey, do you know what, Andy? It's something I won't look into. And he, and he, you know the tune. There's look a into tune. It. What's the tune? Uh, there's there's a tune from the 80s, and it's about the boys hanging Bronsky out. Bronsky beat, wasn't it? I, I can't. 
I can't Small remember. Town Boy, were it? Small Town Boy, that's it, yeah, yeah. 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 And it's about, there's a road in London or a specific uh, borough of district or whatever you want to call it, where you would go to, to choose your boy and they would all mm. be hanging out the windows of these buildings and that was what that song was about. But yeah, because like a certain, uh, quite a long time ago, we're not talking 60s or 70s here, we're talking like around the turn of the, the century, like, like child prostitutes were openly on the street in, mm. in, in London and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. You know, but this was in the time of when, like Edward Heath and that were probably in their thirties or forties. Like yeah. they was still these young boys hanging out these street windows. It was. So what we're talking in, in Cyril, Cyril like Smith? Someone just said in the, the chat. That was yeah, Cyril Smith. Probably, there, yeah. probably Cyril like sixties, seventies. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Weirdos. Like not yeah, that you don't look into that stuff too much because you end up. Yeah, you no, end it's up not my terror, world. That. Mate, that, all, all that kind yeah. of research, like, look into it that. changes you, man. It's yeah. Can't look into that. Thinking about what Fortescue. I can't look at a canal boat the same. Every I time admit. I look at a canal yeah, boat, I look at see if it's got like symbols painted on it or anything like that. <laughs> you look at <laughs> seriously, you look at everything to see if it's got symbols on Andy PG. Yeah, 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 it does. Yeah, yeah, S sigils. Right, just put that uh, presentation oh, back up, man. Sorry, mate. Yeah, it's all right, buddy. Where's it gone? Here we are. Your screen. I've got mate. I've got so many win things to choose from on my little. Yeah, panel. I know, mate. <laughs> right, okay, um, here we go. Right, here we go. Oh, Chris, do you want to do the story? Do you want to do the story? Um. Well, my missus had a, a staff work do, and <clears throat> this guy was doing a speech there. And the, the, the guy who did the speech before him just happened to have on that front cover of Sergeant Pepper's Lone Heart Club. On the screen. Um, on the screen. And then he came on, and he went, oh, that's one of my ancestors, and pointed at Crowler. Obviously, my Whoa. missus knows about him. So when, when, and the whole, the whole um, presentation was about how to control people and how to manipulate uh you know, manipulate business basically. The mind, mind control. And, yeah, and when he finished, um, he left him and Mrs. chased him to the lift and said, "Did you mean <laughs> Crowler?" And he said, "Yes, but he didn't, he didn't. He looked like he didn't want to talk about it. Like he really regretted saying it." Um, oh, so yeah, he yeah, it's kind of thing you say on stage, but not in, not face to face when someone's right in front of you. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was just an instantaneous thing he said. Um, and then we looked into his background a bit when we Mrs. told me. and um, yeah, he's uh, he's got a PR. Is it basically a PR company, isn't it? Fine, and he. Mm. Did he basically got Johnson into mayor, got Johnson into uh, number ten, and Cameron and numerous other shenanigans, and he's a he's a relation of Crowley apparently. Yeah, Alex Crowley. Only potato. So yeah. uh, it says on his resume, Alex Alex Crowley spent over a decade in political campaigning and communications. He was part of the team that won the Conservative Party leadership for Boris Johnson, and recently served in Downing Street. He also helped deliver Boris's two election victories in London and served as political director in City Hall when he was mayor. He was also extensive. He has also extensive experience in the private sector, advising clients such as Ford, British Airways, UPS, the Ministry of Sound. Mark would be interested in that one. Uh, Queens Park Rangers Football Club, London Biggin Hill Airport, and on their political and public engagement. He also said in his in his. Um, in his resume, I have helped get prime ministers elected, convince thousands of local residents to back airport expansion, mobilise hundreds of thousands of consumers to put pressure on regulators, produce compelling video content, directed live broadcasts at venues like Wembley Arena. So basically, you know how to manipulate people. So mm. we've literally got a, a descendant of the greatest dark occultist at the time, Someone who's still revered today, like, and now he's in this influential role. He behind, was a wizard, man. Behind the media, behind politicians. Yes. Yeah. Uh, they're the new wizards, though, basically. Uh, directing everybody. Because this is what you've do. got to consider is like... Yeah, because don't forget, the technology's changed now. So this is the new... This is the modern wizardry. Yeah, because people like Boris Johnson and these are front men, yeah. They, they are obviously controlled not from one step behind by probably like guys like this guy mm. who aren't your um oh i forget the name of that guy the 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 advisor who Cummins. coming yeah but the not people like Cummins that are still in the public eye i'm talking about the, people the invisible that man. yeah the invisible man one step behind them who were you know th with many levels above them still but you know so who's who's more powerful because mm. essentially people like this are actually higher up in the chain of command yeah, Chris, Chris equates it to uh, the sergeant of Omen 2 that that knew where Omen Damien was going and when he said to him, we've been watching you all your life. 
the sergeant had more power than the general, for argument's sake. <coughs> right. Yeah. The sergeant knew the dark plan. Basically. It's like Grandmaster Ginny, like when he was alive. I think he had more power than King Sausage Fingers did, even though he was a prince at the time. Yeah. I would agree. Like, what what is a prince though? I mean, what well, was, I mean, just was, no. What I mean by a, that he, is, is it was was Jimmy a prince? No, no, a no. High, no I, a dark I mean, prince. I mean, you know what I mean? No, me <laughs> yeah, and Lance yeah. have speculated that we think Grandmaster Ginny was actually the wizard for the Windsor family. So mm. that would be a very high up, unique the Rasputin. Point. Yeah, yeah, yeah but, for but, sure. But check this out. When I looked into the Black Nobility, I found out that there are these bloodlines of the Black Nobility and these people that have these uh, these royal titles of places that don't even exist on the map or old, like the Grand uh, the Grand Emperor of Jerusalem. That's a title that someone still holds. Yeah, no. What was Grandmaster Ginny's actual title, Lance? What is oh, it? The oh, full deal. Oh, my goodness. He was the Grand High Master Equestrian of the Order of St. Gregory the Great. Marvellous. And, 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 and in that order, there was only two people above him, and one of them was the Pope. Right. <laughs> like, I mean, you can see like why he's got more... Because think about it, the royal bloodline, if the Queen... When the Queen was alive... Like she's she's the crown, she's the keeper of the crown. So her sons or the heirs to the crown, they're they're just another placeholder. So like the, the wizard would actually be way above any of the placeholders whilst the monarch was still alive. Check this dude out in his t-shirt. Look, yeah, <laughs> nice t-shirt. <laughs> Lovely t-shirt. Right, yes, I love to see that. <laughs> awesome. I've got one or two, but it's too cold. So just for the future, Percy. <laughs> So yeah, this is this is very interesting to find this uh, this Crowley collection. So I'm collection saying, yeah, here. this dude would be probably if he's a direct descendant of Alistair Crowley, he's way well high up in the uh, the hierarchy of the Black Cube organization. Yeah, for sure, a high level high level technician. Put him in a yeah. nice suit. Put him in an office. He looks a go. little bit like uh, what's that little Jew who's the uh, Klaus Schwab's. What's that little dude who wrote the book? Oh, what? No, uh, what uh, Harari. Yeah, oh, yeah. He, 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 he looks a little bit like him with a, da, with a beard. Days of Noah Harari. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he looks a little bit like him. Yeah, what was, just, just going back to the King of Jerusalem, uh, Orwell had a line, a line going back to the King of Jerusalem as well. Yeah. So a lot of these people have got them uh, lines going back. I think Boris had actually as well. Yeah, they, these people can hold titles that you have never even heard of for places yeah. that don't even exist on our map. Mm. It's, it's really that deep. And, and I, I found that out when I, like I said, when I looked into the, um, the well, papal we, we, bloodlines of the black nobility. Yeah. Well, we'll get on to Susan Mickey in a bit, minute. Um, in fact, we'll, we'll, trip, we'll trip over there or we'll be here all night. Um, we've do, already done his uh, bloodlines. End of part one. Michael. I love those drawings. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the possessed. Uh, uh, so, so Susan Mickey um, is is another ideal example of these people who hide behind. If 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 twenty twenty told us anything, a lot of these people weren't normally shoved in front of a camera, were they? You like so witty, Ferguson. Yeah. You know they, they didn't look right. Witty did they? looked uncomfortable in front of a camera every yeah. time. They hadn't yeah. completed their Black Cube organization training, which incorporated the media training and the camera mm. training, whereas Boris had been, but hang Boris on, had but, been pre preparing for that his whole but life. But people who are generally go into politics at a high level like Boris they're, and, and Tony B. Light, they're literally taught how to obfuscate a question or mm. directly lie without directly lying. Yeah. Well, I remember when I was young and I heard so, the first time I heard someone say politics is show business for ugly people. And I thought that's funny because obviously politicians yeah. are uglier compared to movie stars. But I didn't realise how, and maybe even the person that came up with that didn't realise how actually true that pro yeah. possibly is. Yeah. That it is, you know, what you see going on at, at this level with these advisors and these talking heads and stuff, it is just... That, What's that, that video of um, of uh, Rishi walking with the folder <laughs> and then it, he goes behind a car, he comes out and it's changed colour. Yeah, yeah, it's switched from, like, green it's, to, it's mean, switched from if, red to green. If that's well, not like, a pantomime, yeah. like... Well, you know, you, know, you know what the name Garraway means, don't you? On. Holder of the spear. Oh no, Carl, stop it. The spear. It fucking holder. does. Yeah, no gosh. Way. Yeah. We need to get some explosion noise. Ancient right. spear holder. Uh, there's several meanings, but all of them with spear. Wow. That is that's a bomb drop, that one. <laughs> I'm alright, mate. I'm good. Um, yeah, so, so all these people, it, it is like a stage show. Yeah. For, for um, more intelligent, yeah. ugly actors. Yeah, so um, Mickey here, 
um, is she got the right bloodline. She's a eugenicist. She's definitely a eugenicist. She wrote papers on it. Um, she's a communist ideologist. She was called Stalin's nanny when she was at Oxford. Um, yeah, all the financial control and corruption stuff. She was part of Sage and Spy B. Um, and now she's just got a new job at the World uh, Health Organization. Doctor Who. <laughs> Wuhan Holocaust Organization. Yeah. <laughs> So going back to what you were just talking about there, which this is what I find interesting, because when you, like Andy mentioned something earlier, and we're, that's what I'm saying about everything overlapping here. So her ex-husband um, is this guy, Peter Drummond Murray of Maastricht. Um, and his father, Mickey's father, ex-father-in-law, this guy he addressed in his regalia. Um, God knows what that is. Um, he's... He's Peter Drummond Murray um, of Maastricht, Knight of the Sovereign Military Order of Malta. Oh, Maltese Knight. Knight Grand Cross of Honour honor and Devotion in Obedience Sovereign Military Hospitalier Order of St. John of Jerusalem. So this is another one. It is. Yep. Yeah. So that's number two. of Sorry, of Rhodes and of Malta. And he's also Genealogist Sovereign Military Order of Malta. A Knight of Justice, most venerable order of St. John of Jerusalem. There's something very particular about the, 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 these orders out of Malta and the Maltese cross. It's, it's almost like a, something like Switzerland. It has some sort of special significance for the Black Cube organisation and their mm. associates, their uh, European associates. I mean, yeah. I mean, look how he's dressed and he's meant to be taken serious like that. And he's got his Maltese cross there around his uh, fat jowls. It looks like flappy old like tits. Yeah, that's what it looks like. It looks like orang orangutan tits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, so what, the, what kind of ancient order is that? Maybe it's him, so, Bill, Bill Gates. Maybe he's yeah, bitch tits. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The ancient order of grand bitch tits. Bitch tits. Yeah. Bitchiest titties. Yeah. Uh, Classic. That's a, that's yeah. a slick Rick clip right there. Yeah. So yeah. So this is this is with this is Mickey's children's grandfather. So we've got to get that in context. She's related to these people, and her kids are half of these people. They're th related into like the Spanish monarchy, King, Alf King Alfonso, uh, King Charles III of Spain. The Murray, Murray fam family are also related to barons in Scotland and marquesses in Scotland, etc. I won't go into all the names because uh, uh, and viscounts uh, in Scotland as well. So there's so many bloodlines that go back he's also shares the same bloodline to boris which is um i think it's king james second of scotland he shares a bloodline with um and on a side note so does hugh grant guy ritchie and winston churchill they also carry that henry the seventh bloodline that he carries among others wow. none of them are plumbers None of them are plumbers. There's no plumbers in this bloodline. So this this guy on the right hand side here um, is Susan Mickey's brother. That's Jonathan uh, Jonathan Mickey. He's a British economist, president of the Kellogg College at Oxford. And now we know the Kellogg, the guy, the original Kellogg who came up with Kellogg's cornflakes was a eugenicist himself. There's videos all yeah. over the place, yeah, about him being a eugenicist. Um, both of these inherited a Picasso which they sold for 50 million. Bear in mind, they're both communists. And, uh, and they sold the Picasso in 2013 for 50 million. They'd inherited the Picasso from their grandfather, Henry Duncan McLaren, second Baron Abercornway, CBE. Mate, high-level artwork like that's just money laundering. Mm. You, uh, yeah, it's extortion. No, yeah, all it's, of money it. it's a way to launder money. Um, and it was passed on via Mickey's mother, Dame Anne McLaren, so this is a communist. This is who she's related to. It's a communist. Um, and she's telling everybody they should be wearing masks. We'll play that video in a second, just to wind everybody up. <laughs> just cue that up. Yeah. Uh, just cue that up. The in interesting thing is, um, Mickey's father was Donald Mickey. He worked at Bletchley Park for the government. He was a cyber expert, um, Donald Mickey. And her mother, 
Dame Anne McLaren was a British scientist and a leading figure in development biology. Her work helped lead to human in vitro fertilization, IVF. She was the daughter of Sir Henry McLaren, second baron. That's Mickey's grandfather. Both of these two got divorced, but they were still on friend friendly terms. And in 2007, July 7th, 2007, both were killed when their car left the M11 motorway, crashed in Cambridge. Interesting. Mysteriously. I didn't do it. Was, yeah. I mean, what were they into? Were they... I, well, he I was always a, think it's suspicious when a, 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 like two people at a high level get killed together because yeah. you never know if they've been done in or it was just a freak accident. Well, it, what, 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 the similarities to me, although it was slightly different, but Chris Whitty's father got whacked um, in Greece. What had happened was he worked for the British Council, which is a known MI6 front. It was a part of the Foreign Office. Right. And it's part of the Arts Council where they put money into areas uh, covertly, and then change. Um, the, it's, it's like it's like mind control operation where they change people's minds, but via arts and whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So Chris Whitty's father bought a, a Ford Escort in Greece, and a Muslim terrorist shot him, saying he thought he were an MI6 agent. And the car apparently was bought from an MI6 agent, if you believe all that. So Chris Whitty's father was assassinated in Greece. Right. And Chris Whitty then, like Boris, who was shipped off to boarding school, was shipped off from Greece to boarding school with his brother. And he went to Grisham College, another one of those uh, schools. Rape, rape houses. <laughs> you said it. <laughs> Call a potato a potato. Yeah. yeah. Um so he would have been ever, obviously heavily traumatised as well, would Chris Whitty. Um, so Mickey is director of the Centre for Behavioural Change and head of the Health Psychology Research Group at the University of College London, which of course is obviously funded by the Gates Foundation. She also seems to be, well, she is a eugenicist. I mean, her mother basically was part of the team that invented IVF, which is another control element of birth, isn't it? I mean, we covered that in a podcast about two years ago, I believe. Yeah. Um, she and Dame Teresa Marteau, uh, director of the Behaviour and Health Research Unit at the University College of Cambridge, or University of Cambridge, Harriet Drake, who is a psychosexual and relationship therapist who trained at the Tavistock Centre, and Market Bobro CBE, M Martin Bobro, sorry, CBE, a British geneticist uh, and fellow of the Wolfson College, Cambridge. Together, they published a paper called Attitudes Towards the selection of desirable characteristics in children. Desirable characteristics? Um, Says who? Um, you can read it on PubMed, right? The paper reports the results of a survey of 973 members of the British public in which attitudes towards methods of achieving desired personal character characteristics in their children are compared. While there was little support for the use of gene manipulation to achieve desirable traits in children, the proportion would consider doing so has more than doubled in 12 months since the public were last polled to the question. Bear in mind, this is the mid-90s. Come back to the peasant farming theme. Yes. There. The small but growing public support for the use of gene therapy to enhance human characteristics points to the need for debate involving the public as well as scientists before such techniques are feasible. That's what she's... So when you see her now saying you've got to put your mask on and stuff like that, she's in control of all this. Now, I just want to show something else before we start that video, uh, Lance. Okay. This is her current husband. Lucky lad. Oh, that's her daughter, actually. Uh, she was PR agent for Jeremy Cob uh, Co Coburn or whatever he was called. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, this is her husband, Robert West, not Fred West. Um, <laughs> so this look who he works for. I'll let you read. His, his competing interests who he works for. This is his website. Oh, I right, okay. Michelle Pfizer. Michelle Pfeiffer. Yeah. Um, GSK. Johnson & Johnson. Wow. This is who pays his wages. This is her husband. 
again, you can see, so there's politics, military, industrial, pharma complex, and um, yeah, they're all, all linked through these players. The military, pharma, industrial complex. The pe- military, <laughs> yeah. industrial, entertainment, peasant farming complex. It's yeah. all one thing. Nice, nice. Yeah. Marvel. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, we, like I say, could have gone all night. We've done nearly two hours doing this, and uh, we haven't... Uh, do you want to put that video on? Okay, let's go for it. So, what's the, this? Is uh, Mickey in t- in twenty 2020 twenty or twenty tw- early t- in twenty twenty one? I think it was twenty twenty. Okay. Uh, so we've been interviewing. Just, uh, Mickey, if I can start with you first. Do you think that this, this is going to be right? We've had so much hope on the vaccines, hopefully changing everything, bringing an end to the pandemic, bringing an end to all this, these changes we've had in our lives. Do you think it won't be enough? Vaccines are a really important part of the pandemic control, but it's only one part. Test, trace and isolate system, border controls are really essential. And the third thing is people's behaviour. Um, that is the behaviour of social distancing, of when you're indoors, making sure there's good ventilation or if it's not wearing face masks and hand and surface hygiene. We'll need to keep these going in the long term and that will be good not only for COVID but also to reduce other... So when you say long term, sorry to interrupt Professor Mickey, when you say long term, what do you mean by that? How long? Very quickly. Um, I think forever to some extent because... (laughs) Didn't fucking win that one, did you, Mickey? 